Some of you may be wondering why half the lights are on and half the lights are off. I will tell you. I don't know. (laughs) That's the short answer. Pardon the pun. We'll get somebody out to fix them. Don't worry. Indeed, on this feast of Christ the King, we experience our King in word and in sacrament. The scriptures, the word of God, draw us to experience our King wearing a crown not made of gold, but of thorns. We experience a king who reigns not from a throne, but from a cross. A king who wears not the regal vestments, but instead is stripped of his garments. A king who is covered not in splendor, but in sores. A king who is surrounded not by a royal court, but by two criminals. We experience the king today, the suffering servant, the one who is despised by his contemporaries, mocked by authorities, betrayed by an apostle, rejected by his own people, crucified by the Roman soldiers, yes, But surely he is crucified by my sins and yours. He is crucified precisely because he claims to be God. He was not crucified because he worked miracles. He was not crucified because he teach, he taught wisely. He is crucified because he made the claim to be God by forgiving sins. Only God has the power to do that. By claiming to be the Lord of the Sabbath, using the title, I am, a divine title. He taught with his own authority and not like the scribes. He was crucified because of his claim to be God. The Father and I are one. And such a claim is either utter blasphemy or it is true. C.S. Lewis, who died 50 years ago last week, in fact, he died on the same day as President Kennedy. C.S. Lewis always scoffed at those people who said that Jesus is a great teacher and I admire his words, but he is surely not God. C.S. Lewis says that is the one thing we may not say. A man who said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool You can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. Our Lord on the cross presents us with two options, personified by the two criminals crucified with him, one who mocks and jeers, the other who cries out to him for divine mercy. Remember me 
when you come into your kingdom. This choice is ours to reject him or to accept the role of being the servant of so great a king. A couple months ago, several men in our parish formed themselves as a group determined to learn more about the Lord through the study of Scripture and other holy books, by the practice of the sacraments and by fellowship. They call themselves the King's Men. You might remember them from the red shirts they sometimes wear. They are determined to be good servants of the King in their daily lives. And so must we, putting into practice on a daily basis, amidst the circumstances of our lives, putting into practice our faith, being men and women and children of the King. We do this by daily praying, daily opening our hearts to Him and letting in His presence in our lives, daily turning to Him in prayer, opening up to Him. We do this by daily looking out for the needs of others, especially those who live in our own house, daily looking for those opportunities to be positive, to give a smile, to give an encouraging word, to extend a work of mercy. We do this by daily striving to be generous in sharing the gifts that God has given to us, sharing our material gifts, something that we call stewardship, and sharing our spiritual gifts, something that we call evangelization. It is by the daily practice of our faith, looking for those opportunities that he gives us to express our loyalty as subjects of the king, to express our fidelity and our determination to follow him wherever he leads. We do not do this in theory. We do it in practice. We don't do it in some other world, someplace else. We do it in the context of the life that our Lord gives us to live. This feast of Christ the King gives each of us the opportunity to renew our dedication to follow Him with all of our heart and mind and soul. Only one who is crucified for our sins, only one who gives his everything for us can demand in return everything from us. And so on this feast of Christ the King, before we meet him in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, before we meet him in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, where Calvary, the sacrifice on Calvary, becomes present to us, where he gives once again his body and blood, soul and divinity, before we meet him in the Eucharist, let us pray a traditional prayer before the crucifix, I'd invite you to fix your gaze upon your King. Fix your gaze upon the crucified Lord represented in the image of the crucifix. And let this prayer be your own. My divine Savior, what did you become when for love of souls you did suffer yourself to be bound to the pillar. Ah, how truly then was fulfilled the word of the prophet, saying of you that from head to foot you should be all one wound 
so as to be no longer recognizable. What shame you did endure when they stripped you of your garments. What torments you did undergo in that tempest of countless blows. In what torrents did your most precious blood gush forth from your bursting veins. I know well it was not so much the injustice of the Roman governor and the cruelty of the soldiers that scourged you as my sins. O accursed sins that have cost you so many pains. Alas, what hardness of heart when notwithstanding your manifold sufferings for me, I have continued to offend you. But from this day forth it shall be no longer. United to you by bonds of loyalty forever, as long as I shall live, I shall seek to satisfy your offended justice. By the pains you did suffer when bound to the pillar, by the scourges which tore your innocent flesh, by the blood which you did shed in such abundance, have mercy on this unhappy soul of mine. Deliver me today and always from the snares of the tempter. And when I have come to the end of my exile, bring me safely home to heaven with you.